Okay, this is our lesson on reading and creating line graphs and bar charts, starting at functional skills level one, leading up to functional skills level two. I would like you all to have a pen, pencil, ruler, and a piece of paper. The piece of paper should be squared, preferably, or graph paper. Okay, so I will have to rely on some of you to pause the video when I ask you to, complete the task that I've asked you to set, and then play the video again to get some answers or some explanations. So I'll start off by sharing the presentation so that you can all see it. And then I will get started. So reading and creating bar charts and line graphs, functional skills level one or two. Moving on. So we're starting the lesson off with a starter activity. We do have 12 questions. Please write the questions and answers down in your books or on the paper you have. And take your time, pause the video for two to three minutes and then play the video again and I will show you the answers that we can mark. Okay. Right, I'm about to show you the answers. Please mark your work. Honestly, if you get it wrong, you can just put a cross and put the correct answer next to it. Give yourself an honest score out of 12. And then next time we do a starter activity like this, we can compare our results and see if we are improving. Okay, let's get started with our lesson. Let's just have a quick recap from our last lesson from Graphs and Charts. It was a while ago now. So does anyone remember how many axes a graph or chart needs? It needs two axes, it needs an x-axis and a y-axis. X-axis will be going left to right, so it'll be horizontal. And a y-axis will be going top to bottom, which would be a vertical one. I will have slight pauses in the presentation just so that you can answer some questions before I jump in with the answers and just start alerting loads of information at you. So the variables. What variables would we have in a graph or a chart? Well, firstly, we'd have a dependent variable. Dependent variable would depend on the information that we're putting into the table. And secondly, we would have an independent variable. Independent variable is a variable that does not change no matter what. I'll explain a bit more on this later on, but that's all we need to know up to now. So when we are creating a graph or a chart, we need to know which information is going onto which axis. Usually, x-axis is the independent variable, but that is not always the case. So every graph or chart needs four things, and these four things can be remembered with one word, that word salt. The S stands for a scale, going up the y-axis, usually, in the same quantity each time. For example, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, going all the way up to whatever the highest value is within that information. Axis, A. So we've just discussed with a y-axis and an x-axis. L is labels, labels for both axes, both axes. Uh, the label should say which one is the frequency and which one is the product or things we are counting. And title, everyone should have a title, every, every graph or chart should have a title, and nobody should miss that out. Okay, so I put a nice and easy bar chart on there. When you look at the bar chart, notice that the way it is structured is the information on the y-axis goes up in tens equally and with equal distance between them. The bars are all the same width with the same gap in between each bar. And the key on the right hand side is nice and easily seen. What they could have done is just wrote daily underneath the red bar. They could have wrote twice a week underneath the orange bar. But in this case, they've chosen to use a key, which is perfectly fine. Does anyone tell me what's missing from this bar chart? Well, labels would be a good start. So what is up the side should be the amount of people. And along the bottom, it should say how often people eat sweets. 
And then obviously the one at the top, which we all should have the title. Okay, so three questions on this bar chart. Firstly, what is, which axis is the independent variable? Anyone remember? I've just been through it on the last slide. Independent variable is it X axis. Well done to anybody who got that right. Second question, which axis shows the dependent variable? Well, I've just said independent variable is X axis. So the dependent variable must be on the Y axis. How many people eat sweets weekly? So for this answer, we would go to the key. The key says green is weekly. So we'll go to the green bar, go all the way to the top. It's in between 60 and 70, just below in between the middle. So about 63 or 64 would be acceptable. Okay, moving on. Reading the graph. Below is a line graph that shows the amount of wildlife that are in zoos. Okay. So this graph shows the population of bears, it shows the population of dolphins and the population of whales from 2017 to 2022. Okay. Anyone notice which, what information is missing on this graph? Again, it's a label of the Y axis. This should say frequency or amount of animals or it should be labeled up the Y axis, what them numbers represent. Okay, so a couple of questions on this one. Which is the independent variable? Is it the numbers up the side or is it the years across the bottom? Which one is it? It is the years across the bottom, it's the X axis. They are independent regardless of how many animals there were per year, the years will still be where they are. In 2018, which animal is there more of in zoos? 2018. So we go to 2018, we'll go up the graph and we'll notice that the orange dot is the highest. What does the orange dot say it is on the key? The dolphins, well done. Oh, two more questions. How many dolphins are in zoos in 2020? So because this graph is not exact, we'll have to estimate an answer there going to 2020. Going up to that orange dot, anywhere in between 10 and 80 would be acceptable. In which year are the whales at their highest population point? Okay, so we'll go to Wales, which is the grey line. Going along that grey line, which year was it at its highest point? 2019 is the answer. Okay, so drawing a bar chart, I would like everyone to pick up a pen. I would like them to write down these six points because we're going to have a go at drawing a bar chart in a minute. Okay, so check your dependent variable and find the highest value. The dependent variable are the numbers on which one is the highest. Ensure that your scale goes to at least its value. So if your dependent variable goes up to 100, your scale needs to go up to 100. Your scale can go up in ones, fives, tens, whatever is needed, but make sure the intervals are the same all the way up. So on the x-axis, there's only one bit of information that you need. Put enough space between each independent variable that you can draw a bar. So it is good practice when you're drawing a bar chart to keep all the bars the same width and all the gaps in between the bars the same width. I would like to pause the video and write that down. Okay, we're going to be moving on. So the slide just gives you information about two different things. The first one is the amount of people and their favorite color. Second one, chocolate bars sold and which chocolate bars they are. I would like you to draw a bar chart using the left-hand set of information. 
If you find it too easy or it looks too easy and you want to do the right hand side instead, that's fine. But I would like you to have a go at the left and then use the right hand one for an extension activity. Okay, so pause this if you need to write down the information or you need to just do all the chart and I'll wait. Okay, moving on. Drawing a line graph. Again, we've got a few points which I would like you to write down because we're going to have a go at drawing a line graph. So the y-axis, check your dependent variable and find the highest value. Ensure your scale goes to at least this value and you can go from ones, five, tens, whatever is needed. Notice that this is exactly the same as a bar chart. The y-axis, you need to know the same information. Go up in the same intervals, make sure your scale goes high enough and check your dependent variable for the highest value. X-axis, equally spaced independent variables go vertically up and mark the point. That is the only difference between a line graph and a bar chart. What you'll need to know for a line graph is you just put a little cross at where it meets, whereas a bar chart, you would put a line going across to the number and two lines going down to create that bar. Okay, pause the video to write it down if you need to. And we are moving on. Drawing line graphs. So this is the last slide we're going to have today. It just gives you two lots of information. What I'd like you to do is draw, using the first two columns, draw the information on the line, join them all up in a line, and then plot the second lot of information. If you've got colours with you there, put yourself a little key at the side so you know which one's which. If not, you can just label the line. There is different ways of doing this which should make it very good. So make sure you use a ruler for all of your lines. Don't just freehand it. It doesn't look very, doesn't look very presentable and it's not good practice. In an exam, you will lose a lot of marks for not using rulers and not presenting your work right. Okay, so pause it if you need to. Okay, so final slide. Thank you for attending today's session. All of you that have done, all the answers for today's session will be at the beginning of tomorrow's session. If you enjoyed it today, understood everything fine, then well done. Please send me an email telling me anything that I can do better for you. If you don't understand everything today, don't worry about it. Ask your parents, send me an email, ask me for more information. I'm sure I can provide websites which will help you practice. I can provide more information on certain aspects if you need to. And I've added my contact email at the back for those of you who don't have it. Thank you very much.